Hello everyone, uh, myself Dr. Antarip. Let's start with transportation. And today we'll deal with transportation in human beings. <clears throat> now transportation, what do you mean by transportation? Transportation is the process in which a material goes from one place to another. Suppose this material is Goes travels down this road. Okay, this is transportation. For transportation in our real life, what do we get? Road is there. Rail lines are there. Right, airways. And one transportation medium is there. Road is itself is there, but you have to walk or you have to take a bus or car these are the medium now let's see what is transportation in human beings let's start with the paragraph and see what they, what it has been said we have seen in previous section that blood transport food oxygen and waste materials in our body blood transport food oxygen and waste material what does blood transport food oxygen and waste material in class 9 we learned about blood being a fluid connective tissue you just have to remember and blood consists of a fluid medium called plasma in which the cells are suspended plasma transports food carbon dioxide nitrogenous waste in dissolved form oxygen is carried by the red blood corpuscles and many other substances like salts are also transported by blood. We just need a pumping organ to push the blood around the body network of tubes to reach all the tissues and system in place to ensure this network can be repaired if damaged. Now what they have mentioned here is first the function of blood in transport is blood you just remember four. Four. Blood transports four. Four means food, oxygen, and waste material. Waste materials can be nitrogenous waste, etc. So, blood transports four, which is food, oxygen, and waste material. It's simple. The, you will uh, remember this uh, mnemonic I guess <coughs> oh. now blood itself is a connective tissue connective tissue means it connects other tissues so bone is also a connective tissue now blood is a special type of connective tissue which is known as fluid connective tissue Blood is a fluid connective tissue. You have to remember this for MCQ point of view. Don't you think you should? Now, let's go to the next line. What they have said. <coughs> Blood consists plasma where cells are suspended. You got this in your class 9 biology, I, I believe. And uh, waste materials, carbon dioxide are dissolved from. I already told you in previous video that carbon dioxide 97% get transported in dissolved from. This dissolved carbon dioxide is dissolved in plasma section of the fluid connective tissue that is blood. So remember this thing also. Now oxygen is carried by the red blood corpuscle. What where the pigments this is the these are those are the hemoglobin you remember this hemoglobin carries oxygen and hemoglobin is present in rbc red blood corpuscles or red blood cells many other substances like salt are also transported by blood and we need a pumping organ network of tubes and a system in place to ensure pumping organ what is the pumping organ just guess yes that is nothing but our heart network of tubes what are the tubes 
these are the arteries veins capillaries etc so you have to remember this what is the pumping vein that is heart and the tubes we'll get this in your in your next space so let's start <coughs> this is a section of heart they have shown here okay now you have to learn how to draw this figure because in your examination it might be they might ask you to draw heart diagram of heart so you have to remember this okay for simplification a heart has four chambers this is a simple diagram okay just to understand you have to draw this one this heart this is the right side and this is the left side okay this is called the upper portion is called atrium and the lower one is ventricles now you tell me the right side the upper portion is called right atrium and this is right ventricle this is left atrium and this is left ventricle is it clear to everyone the uh, the chambers of the heart there are four chambers it they mainly divided by right and left and atrium two atrium one right atrium one left atrium one right ventricle one left ventricle is it clear to everyone okay now let's understand it again in the right atrium you see the deoxygenated blood okay deoxygenated means it has more carbon dioxide than oxygen okay deoxygenated blood contains more carbon dioxide partial pressure of carbon dioxide is more than partial percent of oxygen now Oh, you just uh, don't make it a mistake or don't don't make to make it a habit that deoxygenated means no oxygen no no that's not like that if it is said deoxygenated it means it has lower less oxygen okay now <clears throat> you see in the right atrium what happens the superior vena cava superior vena cava or you can say it as upper vena cava as it has been mentioned in your book vena cava from the upper body okay let's remove this diagram for a time being i guess the samples are clear okay they are saying it's a vena cava from upper body or it can be said as superior superior means from upper above superior vena cava is brings blood in the right atrium again the inferior vena cava also brings blood vena cava from the lower body superior is upper body vena cava is inferior inferior means niche inferior vena cava also bring blood blood to the right atrium so the what are these tubes that releases blood is the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava okay now it's i hope it's clear to all okay now here a valve is there so i will discuss it in uh, your later section through this blood goes to the ventricle which ventricle it is right ventricle okay very good now blood collects here right ventricle okay now from the right ventricle from the right ventricle there are channels it's called pulmonary arteries okay now they are of four in number pulmonary arteries these pulmonary arteries 
pulmonary. Don't you get something from this term? Pulmonary. Pulmonary. Means the lungs. Sorry for this. Fights. The airport is nearby, so this fight disturbs my video all the time. Extremely sorry for that. Pulmonary means the lungs and this deoxygenated blood goes to the lungs. Now, in our last video, we have discussed that the, this deoxygenated blood gets oxygen from the environment in the lungs. Do you remember that? In the lung, they get oxygenated. And after getting oxygenated, the blood is again come back to the which chamber it is? This is the, yes, right, left atrium. Left atrium, pulmonary veins get open. Okay, now you understand this? Okay, very good. Now the blood goes to this left ventricle. From this left ventricle, aorta is arised. Aorta. And from this aorta, blood goes to different organs in our body. Is it simplified? Is it clear to all? Okay. Let's make it more simple then. Okay. I will discuss the valves and the pumping action of the heart just in five minutes. For, for the time being, you just learn the different chambers in a simplified diagram and try to understand what are the structure involved in bringing and taking the blood from the heart first the superior vena cava opens the inferior vena cava opens in the right atrium from the right atrium blood goes to the left atrium this is clear from the left atrium there are pulmonary veins a pulmonary arteries sorry i'm extremely sorry pulmonary arteries this pulmonary arteries takes the deoxygenated blood Again, this deoxygenated blood get oxygenated in lungs. From the lungs, the oxygenated blood bring to the left atrium. Is the left ventricle? This left atrium by the pulmonary veins. And from the left atrium, it comes down to left ventricle. And from left ventricle, aorta takes the blood to the different organs. Is it clear? I hope it's clear to all and I try to make it simple so that you all get understand all understand the different structures in taking blood from the heart. Now, now, uh, just remember all arteries carries oxygenated blood except. Here in this case, pulmonary artery, and you will get in your higher classes about umbilical artery also. For the time being, you just remember pulmonary artery carries, here artery is mentioned, don't get confused, it carries deoxygenated blood. 
and pulmonary vein. Vein is mentioned, but don't get confused. Pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood. Is it clear to all? Don't get confused in uh, seeing this vein and artery behind this pulmonary word. If it is written behind pulmonary, it is always the opposite. So you remember this, okay? For MCQ point of view, it is very, very important. Now let's start the paragraph. I have simplified the various structures. Now let's start the paragraph. What is heart? Heart is a muscular organ, which is a big as our fist. Because both oxygen and carbon dioxide have to be transported by the blood, the heart has different chambers we have discussed to prevent the oxygen rich blood from mixing with the blood containing carbon dioxide. The mixing is not allowed. You have seen the oxygenated blood comes to the right atrium, then right ventricle. Then in the left atrium, oxygenated blood comes. The blood doesn't get mixed. Okay. The carbon dioxide rich blood has to reach the lungs for the carbon dioxide to be removed as we have discussed and the oxygenated blood from the lungs has to be brought back to the heart. This oxygen rich blood is then pumped to the rest of the body. We have discussed this. Now, we can follow this process step by step. Oxygen rich blood from the lungs come to the thin walled upper chamber of the heart on the left, that is left atrium. We already discussed this. The left atrium relaxes when it is collecting this blood. It then contracts while the next chamber, the left ventricle, relaxes so that the blood is transferred to it. When the muscular left ventricle contracts in its turn, the blood is pumped out to the body. Deoxygenated blood comes from the body to the upper chamber on the right and the right, right atrium as it relaxes. As the right atrium contracts, the corresponding lower chamber, the right ventricle dilates. This transfers the blood to the right ventricle which in turn pumps it into the lungs for oxygenation. Since ventricles have to pump the blood into various organs, they have a thicker muscular wall than the atria do. You have to remember this. And the valves ensure the blood does not flow backwards when atria or ventricle contracts. Now you understand how this blood goes from atria to ventricle. When this contracts, the blood is pumped to the ventricles. And when this contracts, blood goes to the pulmonary and the aorta through the aorta to the rest of the body. Is it clear to all? Okay, I guess I have simplified and it is it will be helpful to for you to understand. Now let's start let's study how this oxygen enters the blood in the lungs. Let's study this diagram first. As I have told you, through the vena cava goes to the right atrium. Vena cava goes to the right atrium. Okay. From the right atrium goes to the lung capillaries where it gets oxygenated. After getting oxygenated through the pulmonary veins, it comes to the left atrium and comes to the right left ventricle and through the aorta to the body what happens afterward afterward capillaries in body organs from apart from the lungs these capillaries are very very thin and through this diffusion transportation can also occur so oxygenated blood gains transported now let's understand this paragraph 
The separation of the right side and left side of the heart is useful to keep oxygenated and deoxygenated blood from mixing. Such separation allows a highly efficient supply of oxygen to the body because the oxygen is the blood is not mixed. You, you, you see, the blood is not mixed. As the blood is not mixed, the oxygen content of the blood is more. So it is efficient, highly efficient supply of oxygen. This is useful in animals that have high energy needs, such as birds and mammals, which constantly use energy to maintain their body temperature. In animals that do not use energy for this purpose, the body temperature depends on the temperature in the environment. Such animals like amphibians and many reptiles have three chambered hearts and tolerate some mixing of the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood streams. <clears throat> These are the lower animals than us and they have three chambered heart. You have to remember in your book which organisms had three chambered buds, such as some amphibians. Like frog and many reptiles have three chambered heart. But remember, crocodile has four chambered heart. If reptiles have, they have say, uh, you should always consider in your MCQ point of view, this is very, very important. And tolerate some mixing of the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Fishes, on the other hand, have only two chambers of heart. Fishes. Fishes have two chambered heart and the blood is pumped to the gills, oxygenated there and passes directly to the rest of the body. The blood goes only once through the heart in the fish during one cycle of the passes through the body. On the other hand, it goes the heart twice during its cycles in other vertebrae. This is known as double circulation. Now, what is double circulation? You understand this. This is my simple heart. First blood comes here. Then it goes to the lungs. Then it again comes back. It is the one cycle. Then it again comes. Then it through the aorta to the body. Blood comes twice. One time, two time. So it is called double circulation but in fishes this double circulation doesn't occur it is called single circulation in fishes and double circulation in other vertebrae is it clear guys i hope it is clear heart is very very interesting and you have you you should know it by heart because it's a it, it is a heart now uh, more to know about blood pressure what is the definition of blood pressure in your medical career also this definition will help you. The force that blood exerts against the wall of a vessel is called blood pressure. This pressure is much greater in arteries than in veins. The pressure of blood inside the artery during ventricular systole. Systole means contraction. You have to remember ventricular systole is called systolic pressure and pressure in artery during ventricular diastole that is relaxation is called diastolic pressure normal is 120 by 80 we used to say and different pressure mechanisms are there now it's a what is the instrument this is pignomanometer you have to know this term pignomanometer the instrument the high blood pressure is called hypertension tension is hyper so it is hypertension and constriction of arteries which results in increased resistance of the blood for this lead to rupture of an artery and internal bleeding you should know this for more information now let's study about the tubes that is the blood vessels what are these blood vessel i told you already arteries veins capillaries now the arteries arteries are the vessels which carry blood away from the heart to various organs of the body since the blood emerges from the heart under high pressure the arteries have a thick elastic wall what is the nature of the arterial wall? It is thick 
and elastic what is the reason behind it it emerges from the heart directly so heart regularly pumps and to withstand the pressure it has to have thick walls no now what about veins veins collect the blood from different organs and brings it back to the heart we have discussed superior and inferior vena cava about that they do not need thick walls because the blood is no longer under pressure instead they have valves to ensure the blood flows only in one direction now the important statement veins have valves this is p this is p vein have valves on reaching an organ or tissue the artery divides into smaller and smaller vessels to bring the blood in contact with all individual cells the smallest vessels have walls which are one cell thick and are called capillaries we have already discussed now through these thin walls exchange of material between the blood and the surrounding cells takes place across this thin wall the capillaries then join together to form veins and convey the blood away from the organ or tissue. So let's understand this how this capillary so a beautiful diagram is there so these are the capillaries and these are very very thin so the exchange of material takes place in these capillaries you understand this okay now the maintenance by the platelets now if a vessel or tube is there there is a requirement of maintenance now what happens if this system of tubes develops a leak think about situations when we are injured and start bleeding naturally loss of blood from the system has to be minimized in addition leakage would be lead to a loss of pressure which would reduce the efficiency of the pumping system to avoid this blood platelets blood platelet cells which circulate around the body plug these leaks helping the clot helping to clot the blood at this point of injury you just remember whenever we get an injury what happens after some time the blood is clotted the blood solidifies okay now remember if this is a blood vessels and injury occurs here the so blood will definitely go there comes out from this system right to prevent this, these platelets they stick together. In our higher class, you will get this again, stick together and blocks these spaces so that blood won't go out and thus restore the efficiency of the system. These are called platelets. If platelets are less, then many bleeding disorders may occur. Limb. There is another type of fluid also involved in transportation. This is called limbed or tissue fluid. Though the pores present, through the pores present in the walls of capillaries, some amount of plasma proteins and blood cells escape into the intercellular spaces in the tissues to form the tissue fluid or limb. How this tissue fluid is formed? Or limb through the capillaries amount of plasma proteins you have to remember this okay protein and blood cells some blood cells okay escape into the intercellular spaces in the tissue and this fluid 
this constitute the fluid which is known as lean is it clear to all okay now it is similar to the plasma of blood but it is colorless and contains less protein okay how it is different than the plasma of blood it is colorless and protein content is less because protein is filtered out here okay now lymph drains into lymphatic capillaries from the intercellular spaces there are lymphatic capillaries you remember which join to from large lymph vessels and finally open into larger veins limbs finally open into larger veins you remember lymph vessels finally open into larger veins they do not open into arteries just remember this okay lymph carries digested and absorbed fat from the intestine and drain the excess fluid ex from extracellular space back to the blood lymph is important in fat absorption we have discussed this in our digestion videos that from the villi the food get absorbed and there are limb vessels which carry the fat part okay is it clear to everyone i hope this is clear uh, thank you everyone for listening this much in the next video we'll discuss about the transportation in plants if you like the video please like share and subscribe thank you all See you in the next video.